There's people from all walks of life at Wedge and we're all side by side in the community. It's a place of relaxation and uh, catching up with mates that you generally would only catch up with when you're at Wedge. And it doesn't matter whether you're rich, you're poor, in between or however it is, it's, you just all, all become one happy family. My name's Brad Glue, I'm President of the Wedge Island Protection Association and uh, welcome to my shack this morning. So I started visiting up here with a, with a friend from school back in the late 80s and then um, I met my partner Tanya and uh, the rest is history from there. The community really bands together up here and helps everybody out and makes you feel welcome. You know, these beaches here are probably some of the nicest beaches uh, that are going around in WA. The pristine waters out there of the Durian Bay Marine Park are, are pretty good. They're good, really good fishing out there. You know, there's, there's the challenge of getting the boat on and off the beach. So there's, there's no boat ramps or anything like that around. So that, that all adds a part of the adventure, depending on how big the swell is on the day. There's a strong heritage connection with Wedge and, and the people associated with Wedge, both tangible and intangible products in regards to that. So we have uh, Ashley Built Heritage, uh, Jeff Ashley. He's done a number of heritage studies and reports uh, and it's rarity. Given that Wedge Island is the largest informal shack community in Australia, The first shacks were built here in the mid 40s, just from local farmers that would come down and holiday in the area and go to fish. So, you know, we have our, our own firefighting equipment here um, that has all been manufactured and maintained and built by the community, um, including a you know, small fire truck that we've got here. We've got a number of utes, trailers uh, and the like that, that's all maintained and, and serviced through here. The first aid post is, is manned by volunteers um, that are up here that have nursing background. Um, all the equipment inside of it is all fundraised by the community. It's all sustainable power that runs, runs that first aid shop through a, a one kilowatt solar system um, that's on the roof and down through to batteries and an inverter. So, you know, they're just some of the things that the community we've done over the years and we've funded and, and we'll, we'll continue to fund those. I don't know, there's, there's plenty of characters around, don't you worry about that. You, you met any of you? Yeah? I haven't met her, but I yeah, know. <coughs> well, I was just there this morning, I got a long man fix it up for her. Because, yeah. you know, 86. I was going to tell her to do it herself, but you know, she didn't want to. So I said, I'll fix it for her. Now she can go mow her own lawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can go fishing, just do what you want to do with it then, type thing. But, uh, yeah, I can't, can't really complain about nothing, really. Just my wife does, because reckons the track's a bit rough. <laughs> As you would have noticed coming in, bouncing, yeah. bump, bump, bump. But that'll get fixed up and tidied up eventually, I think. So, yeah. Hi, hey, Annie. Good morning, How are you? Yeah, you had seen our first aid post. We call it a pie shop. Yeah. It's up here. Pie shop. You know what pie shop, P-I-E means? Physical injuries and emergencies. If there's anything wrong with your brain, I wouldn't worry about coming because <laughs> nobody could look after that here. <laughs> <laughs> this little place has been here since 1984. Hasn't improved much, but it's seen a bit of action. We've had the helicopter 68 times. When did the road start? A few years back? 12 years ago. 12? It was all that old. Uh, yeah. You should have come here last night. Oh. We, we had a lovely old night, didn't we? better than going to parties, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Most people have been very helpful over the years, very thoughtful. You don't even have to ask half the time, they just know you need it. Like Brad knows he needs, my Lord needs cutting today. And uh, did you hear that, did you? Yeah, I also heard the lawnmower's been fixed, so it should be ready to go. <laughs> my dear. This is the, um, the old bar. <laughs> This is where we get a lot of people turning up thinking it's an actually a bar. Yeah. <laughs> it's different. 
That's me four string, that's me three string, and I'm making a two string down the shed. And that's out of a macadamia too. Right? <laughs> three string. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Severe straights now, I think. Well, I know. But we'll see. Won't we, Brad? We will. Yeah. Fight it out at the end, Noddy. The bitter end. No, somebody asked me today, you, you, are you going, getting out, you know, because of this blow coming? I said, where will I go? <laughs> I've got nowhere to go. Over the years we've obviously had to go through the process and we've had a, a number of different levels of licence and lease arrangements. So in 95 the leases first came out they were around the $500 mark. Keep in mind that you only own the shack, you don't own the land on it, it's still Crown land. And that has progressed along all the way through until two years ago when Parks and Wildlife decided to change it through to a, a licence that would be full cost recovery. Through CPI our, our fees did increase and now it's quite apparent that they're, they're using market forces to force out those people uh, within the community that can't afford to, to keep hold of their shack. So. Given that uh, we had a 51% increase and then another 38% increase this year and as you can see, if you go around the settlement, there's not one piece of public infrastructure. The road's been in place to get the public in here for 12 years now, and there's still no public infrastructure. So that's one major issue and hurdle I think that the department and the government as a whole need to combat. If they want to be forcing people to pay that, that fee rate, then there needs to be some long-term tenure of, you know, provided. We always, as the association, putting up solutions in what we, we feel are the solutions in regards to overcoming some, some of the hurdles. You, you would think that a government department that's had um, control over the, over the settlement for 25 years still has no plans on what they actually want to do with the area. Yet this year they'll be receiving a revenue of $1.3 million. So you would assume that over the years that we've had a licence, it's 18, 20, probably $30 million that has been pumped back into the state revenue or into the department um, just through licence fees. You know, we've got a number of uh, shack sites that were lost last year, so five shack sites um, that were demolished by Parks and Wildlife. Um, and it would be quite easy for them to be able to make them available to the general public to even pull up a, a camper or a, a tent or something like that. But it just seems it's, it's too hard or, the, or they don't want to do it. So it's just quite disappointing. The ministers, yeah, look, I'd like to see them come to the table and have a, have a talk with us. We do have a new minister that's been appointed due to the election. Um, the previous minister didn't want to speak to us because they'd already been given the opinion by the department that we were uh, hard to get along with, argumentative. All we're trying to do is put a solution forward for our community and for the rest of Western Australians to be able to enjoy the wedge lifestyle, so um, without it all being taken away. The future, I think, for, for all West Australians would be be able to continue to have access to this unique, unique place. It'd be a damn shame to see it all disappear and slowly be eroded by the rules that have been put in place or the, or the no commitment that's being put in place by the government or the, or the department. I think that would be a shame because once, once history's gone, it's gone. It's, you know, it's, you can't get it back. We're advocating um, fairly strongly uh, in regards to being trying to open up the area for the general public to come in 
uh, whether that's either through day use areas, camping areas, shack stay experience, uh, all that sort of stuff to be able to, so that everyone can actually get in and, and enjoy the place. So I'm pretty sure that if you had the opportunity, um, you know, there'd be plenty of people around, around town or around, around Perth or WA that would probably jump at the, ex jump at the opportunity to be able to do that. So. Yeah, for sure. I think that would be that would be the ultimate game to be able to for our long term tenure and allow the public access into the area. I think everyone's here for the same reason, enjoyment. Um, that community feel um, and just just relaxing and and taking in the the coastal experience you know down in Perth you have different suburbs and different profiles of people I suppose but here at Wedge everyone's just you're a Wedge shack owner so and it doesn't matter whether you're rich you're poor or in between or however it is it's you just all all become one community and one one happy family <laughs>